session uh, lecture 1 of uh, this unit 5 series so this is the last uh, unit uh, that is uh, in the software testing test management and this is today's uh, first lecture uh, in this uh, session uh, we will talk about uh, test management basically we have studied about uh, the various aspects of tests uh, in terms of uh, test strategy uh, integration testing test cases procedures how to write and examples uh, <coughs> and uh, life cycle of uh, tests uh, how we are going to achieve uh, as part of the development life cycle of android software testing and as part of the test uh, life cycle test management is also an important aspect of the android software testing so how are you going to achieve all this uh, test management and and the other part of our test management is called configuration management so both of them we will study in this uh, unit it may take couple of uh, lecture sessions or little more so we will try to understand uh, what is test management what is configuration management okay so basically we will uh, study about the test process how the test process relates to relates to the software week cycle or the model we know that uh, the test process uh, basically relates to the v model because v model is not just for the android software development it is also for the testing so that v model takes care of testing so we studied about uh, the various uh, uh, v model cycle like pm method and uh, uh, multiple v model iterative v model and uh, uh, etc so this is basically the relationship of the test process within the v model uh, that also we will try to study uh, in uh, what we have said earlier and also we have uh, designed the concept a method they use uh, for test management, then test driven development, also some sort of a uh, development in terms of uh, 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 understanding providing the test hooks so that the development can be complete for the testability. And, uh, we'll also study about the agile scrum development process, how we can manage for testing the use. So, that is about test management. Also, part of the test management, the configuration management also we will try to understand. So, we know that configuration uh, is uh, one of the important item uh, of the embedded software uh, lifecycle. So, we need to configure the various aspects of the embedded software lifecycle artifacts. So, those items, uh, what are those items? How are we going to control it? How are we going to version it? Uh, how are we going to change it or change management process? How are we going to apply? and what are the tools that are used in the industry for configuration management. So, these aspects we will study in the test management of this unit ok. Now, what is test management? So, in similar terms test management uh, mostly uh, refers to the activity of managing the computer software. So, basically it is an activity for managing the computer software testing, so that is what the test management does and refers. So, what is configuration management? So, configuration management uh, is a discipline for systematically controlling the changes in software and supporting documents. So, basically it is a process or a systematic steps for controlling the changes in software because software means always we live with changes tests means always we live with changes in tests test cases scenarios procedures execution scripts or different builds we even test it different environment so all this like it could be a hardware it could be a tool it could be a software so change management or control configuration management can be applied on various of aspects of the entire software life cycle of the 
tests basically because we are focusing on the tests. So, what are the artifacts we use in the tests of an embedded software system? So, that is what uh, we do with the configuration model. So, basically, it is a discipline of discipline for systematically controlling the changes in software and supporting documents. So, supporting documents could be test cases, test plan, and uh, it could be software requirements itself, a design document or unit testing, whatever it is. That is what we do with the configuration management. <coughs> Test management it deals with the managing the complete software testing process. How are you going to manage each of the process elements or the artifacts? So that is what is about test management. Okay. Having understood the, the definition of configuration management and test management, let us move on to configuration management element. We start with configuration management. Try to understand the, all the items of that, and then try to go through test management. Okay. So, what are the configuration management elements that are there in the configuration management process? So, configuration management has identification of configuration, configuration control. Configuration control applies to hardware. Configuration control applies to software, it applies to documents, methods, tools. Next, configuration status accounting. So, that is one of the elements. Then, configuration audit. So, basically, these four are the basic elements of the configuration management process or the configuration management activity. So, each one what are we going to do? We will study in later slides like identification of configuration items, configuration control, how we can control all the hardware, software, it could be documents, methods, tools. Then the next activity is configuration state of accounting, that means we are going to generate a report in terms of so what are the configuration items available, used, applied, and Accounted for the embedded software the configuration, and in the end, how are you going to confirm it with the standards and all that? So that is with the help of audit. It is also an important item when we do the configuration management. Okay, the next slide is about. In general, the configuration management process. It's also called as a CM process. The CM process for both hardware and software, as I said, it can be applied for both hardware and software. So, it comprises five distinct distinct disciplines as per the standard military HDB K61A and ANSI standards AA649. So, you can see the link, you can go through that and try to understand it in detail. But it is basically a process for both hardware and software configuration items having five disciplines. So, what are those disciplines? These disciplines are carried out as policies and procedures for establishing baselines and performing a standard change management process. That means, these disciplines are basically carried out as a policies that means, Set of standards and procedures for establishing the baselines. So, what is a baseline? We will study in the next slide and perform the standard change processes, standard change management process. That means, with the established process and standards, we are going to carry out these disciplines. Those disciplines are CM planning and management, configuration management, and configuration planning, configuration identification. Configuration control, configuration status accounting, configuration verification and audit. So, basically, whatever the elements that we have said in the general configuration management, the same disciplines have to be used. Here, you can see there are in general four configuration elements identification of configuration item, configuration control. Accounting and audit. Here we have additional step in terms of planning. So planning is the first thing that we do, right? 
So we do when we define the embedded software testing project or product. So we are going to have a plan. So that also should be carried out as a configuration process. That is what the additional process they talk about in uh, uh, military standard and ANSI standard uh, 61A as well as 649. So we will try to study in detail about each of these five uh, disciplines. Okay, the first one being the planning and management. So we know that why we need planning. Okay, each of them will try to understand configuration management, planning, and management. So configuration management planning, we need to have as part of the initial stage of the embedded software testing. And we are going to manage the project or product entirely with the help of that planning document. Basically, it's a formal document. The document will have a lot of things what we have studied in our earlier units, understanding the environment, the strategy, the process, the guidelines, everything that a team can carry out for the embedded software testing activities. That's what we do with the CN planning. Okay, a formal document and plan to guide the CM program that includes items such as personal responsibilities and resources, training requirements, administrative meeting guidelines. Including a definition of procedures and tools, baselining process, configuration control and configuration status of accounting, naming conventions, audits and reviews, subcontract or vendor CM requirement. So, basically, the configuration management process discipline has the first step as configuration management planning and management. So, as part of the planning. Test planning, we will also have a configuration management planning. This planning can be a part of that, or it is part of that process, but it, the document can be part of that, or it can be separate. Work. So, what we do basically is we produce a formal document for this planning and management, and we will provide a guide or a pointers. Which are having personal that means resources. What is the team? Who are the resources doing which functionality? What are the resources doing white box? What are the resources working on the uh, manual testing? What are the resources responsible for configuration control itself? What are the resources which will help in terms of administrative activities? All this will be identified. Then we have responsibilities and resources. Resource could be hardware, software, personal, whatever it could be. All this will be part of the planning. Then we will identify training. Sometimes what will happen is uh, embedded software testing will lead to a lot of training requirements like uh, understanding some processor, understanding a tool, or understanding a client specific system. So all this all part of the training requirements that also will be identified in CM plan. Then administrative meeting guidelines for these administrative tasks, how to meet those things will also be provided. Then including a definition of procedures and tools. That means how are we going to define, how are we going to use that tools, where we can find out those, all this will be part of this, it is a master set basically the CM planning document. Uh, then baselining process, so we will talk about baseline in the next uh, session or next slides, baselining is a process where uh, we are going to identify and approve some set of 
a artifact and how are you going to arrive at so that information will be there in the base form then configuration control and configuration status accounting how are you going to control how are you going to deal with the changes how are you going to have different versions how are you going to have different revisions there is a difference between revisions and versions we will talk about that basically controlling that in terms of configuration and how are you going to report it or account for that each of the configuration control is what we are going to define in the plan then each configuration items how are you going to name it so what is the naming convention we follow for questioning it or revisioning it that also will be spoken in the planning Mm. Audits and reviews. Who is going to audit? How are you going to audit it? There are a lot of benefits with this plan because it complies to a lot of process, quality, and all that. So basically, we deal with audits and reviews for this purpose. And if some embedded software or subsystems or systems involve a subcontractor or vendor involvement, so what are those? Uh, configuration requirements that we are going to have what are the documents how are you going to outsource them how are you going to control the inputs or the deliverables from them all this will be part of this planning the next item will be configuration identification this is also an important item part of the cm process or same elements or the discipline it consists of setting and maintaining baselines basically it identifies that define the system or subsystem architecture its components and any developments at any point in time that means it consists of setting and maintaining the baselines of the artifacts which basically define the system or subsystem components of system architecture or any test aspects or any intermediate developments or test designs at any point of a time so it is basically controlled it is a basis by which changes to any part of an information system are identified that means we need to have some item available somewhere right because that item is basically an artifact which will be used for continuous improvement or continuous development or continuous changes so without that we cannot do anything so that needs to be available in some sort of a shelf so how are we going to have a, a what is that called a, a daily routine something like a, a file a receipt how are we going to maintain it we are going to maintain that in a folder right or in a file some receipt and that receipt if you want to take out and provide for claiming in our organization we are going to use that we are going to pull it and once we are claimed it we are going to pull it back right so we are going to control it those files or those receipts or some items uh, another example i can keep you are going to you are following in the daily life uh, for example you carry out uh, some activities like uh, you go to office with the intention that uh, you are going to carry out some activities and you are going to come back and uh, you will follow a lot of uh, process while doing that and you are going to control it right. So that control is nothing but uh, in terms of uh, process in uh, software industry is called configuration control for example if personal control what you are going to do is you take the vehicle you check the fuel you will fill it up and you take to office you park it and once your activities work is done you are going to unpack the vehicle come back to home and park in a defined place so basically you are controlling it and something is going to change that means the vehicle is disturbed or the vehicle that you travel has got uh, some issues so you are going to modify something what is that modification it could be a repair so how are you going to do it by defining what is existing first so what is the vehicle correctly you are having it or currently you are having it and identify who can do it so basically you are going to control it 
in terms of identifying those things that is what is nothing but identification. So, here in the configuration management process it is called as configuration identification because basically you want to configure those aspects of the embedded software system ok. So, it consists of setting and maintaining baselines which define the system or subsystem architecture components and any developments at any point in time. It is a basis by which changes to any part of an information system are identified it is important documented and later tracked through design development testing and final delivery. So, any delivery cannot or will not happen without configuration process and those delivery will have definitely certain artifacts those artifacts are identified with the help of an identification process called CI or configuration identification it is very important. So, CI incrementally establishes and maintains the definitive current basis for configuration status accounting because that has to be reported and accounted of a system and its configuration items throughout their life cycle until the project is closed or disposed. So, life cycle could have development, production, deployment, operational support or it could be requirements, design, testing uh, sorry coding and testing or finally delivery. So, all this process life cycle will have some artifacts in terms of entry exit or maintenance etcetera all these artifacts have to be controlled that control will have an identification there is nothing but a configuration identification this is a very important aspect of CM process ok the next one <coughs> configuration control. So, we have identified the configuration item sorry configuration identification with items what we have to configure it then we have to control it. So, as I said we need to control the identified items in the embedded software life cycle. So, that includes the evaluation of all change requests and change proposals and their subsequent approval or disapproval. So, basically this is what is the control it. So, we need to control what defect has happened to the vehicle our daily travel vehicle and what is the change we are going to have it and that change whether it is within the budget or economically we can take care in some other work station all this can be controlled. So, that is what is nothing but the configuration control. So, this includes change request. So, what is that configuration we are going to update it well, what are the what is the configuration that we are going to revisit it is basically because of either a problem or it could be changes changes could be due to problem or due to new feature is it yes. So, these changes have to be proposed first from either the customer or from us or develops or tests and that needs to be approved and if there is an approval then we are going to go ahead with the changes if it is not going to be approved we are going to reconfigure as the existing one. It is a process of controlling modification to the systems to design hardware software firmware etc. So, that is where the configuration control comes into picture. The next one is the configuration status accounting this basically includes the process of recording and reporting configuration item description this is also an important item. So, we need to be baselining it or into be statusing it. So, where are we in terms of configuration? So, basically this process deals with <coughs> excuse me recording and reporting the the configured items and their descriptions. So, how they are configured, what are the parts available, what is it it has etcetera. So, example is hardware software firmware etcetera all this will have a short description and all departures from the baseline during design and production that means, if there is a update or if there is delivered. So, that will have a report that is what we do with the configuration status accounting. In case of suspected items or suspected problems the verification of baseline configuration and upload modifications can be 
quickly return back. That means if you have we doubt some issue is there in one of the item that we have delivered or uh, updated. So if you see the baseline, the baseline will give a report of what is configured and what is delivered. So you can compare with that and any modifications that got approved or disapproved we can easily check with that actually. So that is where the configuration status accounting is useful. The next one is the audit configuration verification and audit. So what we do with this is an independent review of hardware and software for the purpose of assessing compliance with established performance requirements commercial and appropriate military standards and functional allocated and product based lines. That means we have defined in the plan about how my configuration is going to change, update, deliver, etc. Against that, whether am I doing the configuration baselines? That is what we do with the verification and audit. So that will be done basically by independent people such as quality team. So the basically review and <coughs> check against the established process and the process are defined in the plan configuration plan against that whether that configuration items are reported or baseline will be verified. Configuration audits verify the system and subsystem configuration documentation complies with their functional and physical performance characteristics before acceptance into the architectural baseline. So basically what we do is we will do a audit that verifies the subsystem and the system documentation. So we have a checklist sort of a thing. So against the each checklist item we are going to verify what is being artifacted. So that is what we do with the configuration verification audit. Okay. Here is an example of top level configuration activity model is basically taken from Wikipedia. You can see whatever we have seen before in the configuration five basic disciplines elements is been nicely pipelined how they are going to be modeled. So you can see one, two, three, four and the fifth one model and in the first one that is management and planning upon program or project initiation we are going to start this activity. So there is a communication in terms of stakeholders who are going to do <coughs> and there is a time resources planning and all that is going to be set into this process and we require management support for conducting this activity. And we will have a training and guidelines. We will identify resources and facilities. All this will be part of the management and planning. So, basically, the input arrow comprises what are the parts that are going to be there as part of this. And as an output of this, it can go as a request for proposal or contract input. So, somebody has asked you to do this, we are going to come up with this output. And if we are going to request a vendor or something, we are going to request them with respect to request for proposal. So details of RFP and all beyond the scope of this. Basically, we need to understand output will be there as part of the management and plan planning. This will be a document, formal document that will be established, that will be used across the life cycle of the embedded software testing in terms of configuration. Configuration management. So this is basically a CM process. The output of this. So upon uh, management and planning of the CM or configuration management, so the next step will be we are going to identify the various artifacts of the life cycle. What has been told uh, in the earlier session, the configuration identification. So this will have a logistics maintenance plan. That means what are the artifacts that are going to be used in the entire project life cycle and also it can take inputs from 
systems engineering requirement function analysis allocation synthesis all this will be part of the configuration identification and uh, uh, any configuration control based on you do that also can be identified as a ci this planning document also can be a uh, definitely it is a ci the next one is a configuration control once we have identified all identified all the cis we are going to have a configuration control why because we need to have the changes applied on this cis so those cis will be controlled which are going to be identified as a change or which are going to be updated throughout the life cycle of the embedded software testing so contractual provisions approved changes changes in the identified and in dispositions in terms of documentation and entry and exit criteria all this will be part of the configuration control the next model next process will be configuration status accounting so which will take inputs from the different artifacts such as CIs and control outputs and is a status and configuration information as a output that will be produced as part of the accounting this is a basically a report once the report is ready this will be fed into the verification and audit so as part of the process that we have laid out in the planning and we have CIs and we have the control how we are going to do all this will be reported here in the accounting and against the planning against the guidelines this will be verified whether the same thing have been reported so physical ci configuration item or cci is also called as a computer software configuration item test result manufacturing engineering tool documentation all this will be part of the input against that it will be identified so this will basically give a confidence that the product is well controlled configured and tracked so that is where the usefulness of this model okay so this is a basically a good process model this is defined in the department of defense handbook mil hdbk 61 the configuration management guidance so figure 4.1 in that book talks about this activity model okay now we have gone through the various elements let us try to understand each of them maybe in detail in the next lecture but at least we'll try to define them okay configuration element elements configuration identification identification of configuration item this could be a test case test design or any requirements any of these artifacts which are in physical form or which are in software form or soft form or whatever the form it is there those need to be identified those are all called cis so each ci will have a label so that label should be unique that means we are going to identify a software such as or tool vision a so there is a unique label for this unique label for software build so every ci ci1 ci2 ci3 whatever you are going to have should have a unique because we should be able to differentiate between each of the ci so that is why we need to have a label for the ci <coughs> a label usually consists of two parts its name including the title and number and a version you can see the title and its number and a version so each label will identify a version basically so the version could be 1.0 2.0 3.0 3.3 etc this can be a label 
and there is a difference between uh, version and revision basically we will try to understand that in uh, future uh, slides. So basically the label uh, should identify the name of that particular uh, CI and its revision or version. So and this should follow a process or it should follow a convention that is called naming and versioning conventions this is a definite uh, process of identifying uh, naming and version uh, that we need to follow and also we are going to have identification of baselines. Once we have all the CAs available we are going to have one baseline such as a baseline 5.0 for example. 4.0 this can have software item xxx hardware item yyy or software item 1 2 3 all this can be labeled under one identification baseline so that is what they are going to have identification of the baseline under configuration identification next configuration control so configuration control basically has change control as I said any artifacts we should be able to change we should be able to change with a control so the change could be because of multiple reasons maybe I can explain in detail in the future of the slides when we again will touch base these slides the changes could be due to faults or issues so this is issues are resulted in modification the changes could be in terms of new features right customer has told to add a different feature and some improved version improved improvements it can be or there could be an environmental issue or hardware changes have happened all this have to be basically controlled so what we were using in the earlier one and what is going to be changed this needs to be spoken about that is all part of the chain control and the next one is the baseline establishment so each changes will identify one baseline as I said in the configuration identification they are going to identify a set of changes so we have a set of features having 10 features in one product and we have released it and there is a customer demand saying that you add two more features. So we have added two more features comprising to a 12 features so we have earlier released 10 features as one baseline and in the future version we have released as a 12 features as next baseline this is what we are going to establish identifying identified with a baseline. So this is what we do with the baseline establishment this also has to be controlled very well that is what we do with the configuration control. The next one is the version management <coughs> so what we do with the version management is also very important each changes suppose we have identified a change in the future. One. So this basically identifies change in software 1, software 2 and software 3 maybe basically this 1, 2, 3 are something like modules. So each module has to have its own changes right so how we are going to control so we are going to identify as software 1.1, software 2.1, software 3.3 because already there was a revision or version available for 3.2 and we are going to update with the incremental changes that will become another revision called 3.3. So this whole bunch can be one version something like a software version B because we have changed from A with a feature 1 added and impacting on these 3 modules 
So this is called a version. It's also very important to understand. We need to control this version management because against this versions we are going to test it and release it, and the same thing will be used by the customer. So we need to have a configuration control in terms of chain control, baseline establishment, and version management. Next one is the configuration status accounting. As I said, we need to record what is been configured. We need to report information describing the configuration items and their status. That means the status could be baseline or say in progress or waiting for review. All this will be reported. So the status of the configuration can be as per. Depends on again how we are going to define in for a particular embedded software product, and it again depends on the kind of organization that we have and the kind of kind of work instruction that is there for the process. The process could have for the configuration items such, such as create, update as draft, update as rework, because. When the draft is done, it can go for a review, or I would say, or draft review and review rework and updated for final review and it could be updated for baseline. Something like this the different stages of configuration item can go through in the process. So every item will be going through the configuration process basically because we are going to have the configuration identification elements and each element has to go through a different process such as create, review, rework and release it could be baseline or it could be release or complete. So these are the stages of the configuration items. All this will be for each of the configuration. This is one configuration I have put here. It can be for multiple CIs. All this have to be reported in terms of where are we in terms of configuration status. Uh, how much we have configured? What is available in the system? So all this will be provided as part of the configuration status accounting. So the information strategy could be what is there, to whom it is addressed. Or to whom it is available, that means draft is ready for whom, who is doing the review, who is doing the rework, and it is under the final review, and who is going to be reviewing it. And also, we can have when we can have additional information like uh, at what stage it is going to have for the next uh, update. Similarly, we can have how information also, how it is going to be done. <coughs> All this will be part of the configuration status. The next one is configuration audit. This is the last element of the configuration management. So, what we do with the audit is auditing auditing of the product that is being configured. So, we will see the Standards and the procedures that has been established in the plan, configuration management plan, and against that, whether the configuration items are available, we are going to audit it. This will be basically done by the quality team. So they are going to check for the maturity of the configuration items. They are going to see the completeness of the configuration items, whether it is complete or in progress or it is not complete, and is going to check for the compliance with the requirements. That means. Whatever the requirements that has per CI, whether it is in compliance with that, we are going to check it. And integrity, whether it is completely integrated and and it is not partial or it is not fully available, those things will be part of the integrity. Then we are going to check for the accuracy, whether it is accurate in terms of what it is supposed to. Present so all this will be done with the help of audit called configuration audit. Okay. The next one is
yeah that is the five elements of the configuration management elements next we have uh, the configuration management and testing so this we talk about uh, testing aspects how are you going to have a configuration management for testing so whatever we spoke about uh, uh, there is in general configuration management this can be applied for software hardware tools and everything we will focus on testing aspects of the configuration management of course we have another term called scm that is called software configuration management i think we will study that uh, about a cm sorry scm software config management the maybe today or next session okay so what should be configured and managed what should be configuration managed all test documentation test data that means we know that we have right from test planning test cases procedures scripts execution results logs timestamps defects and fixed issues retested artifacts all this will be part of the documentation we want to have it that should be configured and managed documents that the test documentation is based on that means what are documents input documents that we are pointed out all should be under configuration any references of course test environment this also should be configured because we are going to use a set of environment in terms of tools hardware or any software piece all this should be controlled because we cannot have a uncontrolled environment and the control how we are going to achieve is through the configuration so each element of the environment will be configured the product to be tested the product in terms of what product we are going to test it that also should be configured completely and why all this are required is traceability that means we are going to trace each of this artifact against certain baseline and certain release and certain commitment that test team has to take care for a particular activity so that's what we do with the configuration management and the testing aspects okay the next part what i said is the scm software configuration management this also an important part of the configuration management so what is a software configuration management it deals basically with the software so as per the ieee software configuration management the definition goes like this scm is the process of identifying and defining the items in system controlling the changes of these items throughout their life cycle recording and reporting the status of items and change requests very important and verifying the completeness and correctness of items so all this basically deals with the same thing whatever we have defined in terms of planning and management ci configuration identification configuration control status accounting and verification or the audit so that is what scm talks about so scm is the process of identification configuration identification defining the items in the system configuration control of the changes of the change requests that are going to happen for the entire life cycle of the software again maybe add software life cycle okay and we need to record and report that is what state of accounting process it does and the last one is uh, what we do is with uh, validate or verify the completeness and the correctness of the items whatever we spoke about in the <coughs> audit and configuration uh, auditing the Product configuration in terms of compliance to the requirements. That's what we do with the. 
software uh, configuration management. Okay, so why we need uh, SCM, the software configuration management? So when changes in a product that are being developed, so when are we going to apply the software configuration model is that we are going to have one baseline, one set of items configured, we are going to apply the process when there is a change, change of what, change of the products or the artifacts that are being used. So why CA SEM is required when there is a change? To control the changes, it's not just enough to have the changes available that should be controlled so that they have a minimal effect on the cost change uh, schedule and quality. Because if you have well controlled changes and its impact on its updates, it is easy to manage it. And once we have easier to manage aspects of the embedded of testing, so the effect of that will be minimal and uh, the effect is minimal on the cost, duration or the schedule and the quality, all these aspects will be taken care when we have a proper control of the changes. And the SCM helps in development and changes implementation activities, basically with the help of SCM we can do a development and change implementation easier. SCM activities help in accomplishing software quality assurance activities which provide assurance that the software products conform to their specified requirements to provide confidence that quality is being put into the software. That means the quality team can do their audit verification against the standards and all that against the certain artifacts and those artifacts are well controlled and configured, it is easier for them to accomplish, that is what it means. SEM tools definitely are going to be used for taking care of the SEM and that helps in tracking the changes made along with the username, who has changed, this tool can identify, what is the version, what is the history, if there is a 1, 2, 3, 4 versions of the particular software piece that has, got, that has gone through lot of changes, entire history of the changes can be tracked and can be seen, that is that, that's what we can maintain it with the help of SEM tools, that is where the SEM has to be in place. So this can be done on the every artifact of the embedded software testing artifacts, that is what we do with the software configuration management. Okay, here is an flow of SEM activities. So, what are the SEM activities? We know that there is a software configuration management, software configuration management planning, it is called SEMP. Then we have a CM, which is nothing but software uh, configuration management. Then we have status accounting. Basically, it's control management sorry, the next step is status accounting, then we have a release process, then we have a audit, all these are surrounding the configuration identification, so that is what we do with the SM activity, basically this is the control box, okay. the first one being SEM planning Next one is software configuration identification, software configuration control, software configuration status accounting, software configuration audit. So we will try to study in detail about all this and we will try to study a process example of a software configuration management typically followed in an embedded software industry. <coughs> also we will try to understand what are the roles that admin of a software configuration management does and we will also try to study about version control and their details in the next class. So to conclude we studied about the basic elements of configuration management and we understood what is configuration management and test management 
and what are the elements of the configuration uh, management and whatever how it is modeled and how it is controlled in terms of various phases of the configuration management model. and also we detailed about each of this uh, configuration uh, planning control identification status accounting and audit and also we studied about software configuration management We'll try to study more uh, about SCM in the next session. Thank you.